Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. At the start of EAFC 24, we're all going to be opening packs and we're all going to have the same question. Should I keep or should I sell? And in today's video, we're going to try to break that down for which cards you should sell right away, don't hold on to them any longer, and which cards you should keep because they're going to be rising in price as we go throughout the first couple of days on this game. So that's what's in store for today's video. If you enjoy it, drop a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe if you're brand new. And guys, we are going to start off today by talking about getting right into the business of things, talking about the cards, whether you're on the web app, whether you're joining on the ultimate edition, or even the full edition of the game release, talking about cards that you want to actually sell and a lot of times we talk about this and it makes sense but this is reinforcing what we know about supply and demand right that's what controls the market is supply and demand what players are getting packed a lot versus what players do people want to buy and in the very beginning of the game a lot of people are wanting to buy players like this or maybe a starter squad of players like this with a vandevin a kalulu you know those low 80 rated like anything that's 81 rated and below i would call for the most part a starter rated player and a lot of players like this are getting into teams like this is a really solid meta pacey um and really like a beast starter team on this game uh lookman chukweze adiemi but for a card like adiemi and even though he's got 96 pace he's probably gonna see his highest price during the first five to seven days on this game that's when his price for the entire year is going to peak that's how it happens guys almost every single year because yes this card is fun and he's good but people move on really quickly or maybe it's a 91 pace doku right 77 rated you're excited you're a city fan you want to try this card out you buy him he's like 7 to 10k and then all of a sudden he's dropping down in price a lot or maybe you pack him and you're like nate when should i sell this card he's got 91 pace is he gonna go up guys for a lot of these low rated gold cards they are the ones that you want to sell early on. Even though we're all worried and trying to figure out what starter teams we want to buy and what players we've never heard about before or got they got massive upgrades from being bronzes or silvers, now golds to fit into our starter teams when we buy those and install that sort of thing. Guys, those are the cards that you really want to sell you want to go against the grain a lot of people are buying those cards early on to build starter teams it's actually better off if you wait just a couple of days because we know how those prices go and we know how those prices work right shout out to a couple of cards from last year looking at their graphs this is why you want to sell those cards early on 77 rated lacroix last year in fiva 23 started off about 8,000 coins after everybody starts getting on the full version of the game for the early access release a lot of fifa points are opened and like we talked about that supply and demand constant struggle right his supply was very low in these early stages but his demand was high for starter teams he goes from 8,000 coins all the way down literally a week and a half later to being discard 800 750 coins on the market that is a massive drop in a short amount of time that is why players like this you probably want to sell pretty early on and take the coins for right now when exactly should you sell this year with the way the calendar is working honestly guys the best time to sell a lot of these early on kind of like lower tier lower rated cards is probably within the first week of the game right just to give a rough estimate usually right around like we pointed out with this um lacroix card the release date of the full version being out for the first time, the ultimate edition release, the early access. This year, it's a very short window, right? We get on the web app on Wednesday and ultimate edition access is on a Friday. I could see some of these cards like maybe Adiemi and some of these kind of starter team players being at a high price until Sunday, maybe Monday. And then you're going to see a lot of the prices drop off a lot after that as more and more people get on the game. And of course, as more and more packs are open. So I would say for the short week we have ahead of packs that are being opened, take the cash on some of these lower rated cards pretty quick. That's what I will tell you to do uh, because people are going to upgrade from a team like this. Yeah, it's a really good starter team and it's not even that cheap of a starter team, right? There's a couple cards in here that might cost you 20, 30,000 coins. Renato Sanchez, Emre Chan. I'm looking at as probably the most expensive players that are in the squad. Maybe Rabio as well, because he's a bit higher rated and he's French and really good. But, you know, some of those cards are going to start devaluing very, very fast. So I would look to take the coins on anything that is 80 rated or below and take it pretty fast. Now, also what I would say is 
maybe you take the coins on some cards like this as well. Parejo, 86 rated, not getting into basically anybody's teams. He's what we call fodder, right? Only really usable for SBCs, but the only problem is at the beginning of a brand new game, there's really not any SBCs that require 85, 86 rated squads because EA knows that nobody has the coins to go and do those SBCs. So what I would tell you to do is, I would take the coins on this as well. I would sell this type of card. Yes, you might be like, Nate, well, you know, he might only be like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 coins and 86s. Don't they reach like 12K during the year when big SBCs drop? They do. But if you take those 3,000 coins at the very start of the game, you go back to the market and you start investing in other players that are going to appreciate in value, which we're going to talk about a bit, those cards you should probably keep if you pack. I think it's worth actually selling the card unless you're just like, nah, I don't want to think about it. This card's going to go up in price because he's fodder. I'm going to leave him my transfer list. And you could do that as well. I just think there's more opportunity to go sell that card and then go put those coins into other stuff on the market now i have to make a note guys about this year's market because we're looking at all of these graphs from last year remember 81 rated dennis zakaria that was a card last year that i said guys sell 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 as soon as you can his minimum price was 10k or his max price was 10k then his price range got updated so his minimum price was 10k this is a really wild one but for 30,000 coins this card it was never gonna last guys he went boom straight back down malasia was another card that a lot of people wanted to have in their starter teams he went from 5k all the way to 12,000 coins and then he got absolutely destroyed in the next couple of weeks down to 3,000 coins and down to a thousand coins literally just a month or three and a half weeks after the game had come out that's why it's pretty pretty serious info to sell those low rated cards early on now differentiating from this last year's market really this year guys like we started saying, we have to be worried about welcome backpacks. Last year, we had welcome backpacks, which were those 80 plus packs. They were tradable. A lot of us had them. And that is one of the reasons why you see, we've been looking at these graphs now for the past week or so, right? You see like on LaCroix, he didn't go up that much, but like um, Malasia, Malasia went from 4K to 12,000 coins, or we saw other players last year, like Vinny Jr. go from 100,000 coins all the way to 300K in such a short amount of time frame. Here it says on EA's website that returning user rewards are going to be replaced. I don't know if this is going forward after this year or if there's not going to be any packs at all with players in them to start this year of FC24 because these FC founder status rewards don't give out any actual cards with players in packs. It's all TFOs, kits, and stuff like that. You can read a bit more about that in these pitch notes that EA dropped um, a few days back. But... This is a really interesting situation, guys, because if we don't get the welcome backpacks that are tradable at the start of the year, then we're not going to have a huge opportunity to see cards like this Vinny or like Erling Holland last year, how they were so cheap. These are the examples that we keep looking at. But I want to talk you through the reasoning behind it. The reason that Erling Holland was 30,000 coins last year and it ended up going to 300K plus was because there were so many packs opened that first day that the web app opened up because they were all given out. They were the welcome back packs. If that doesn't happen this year, we're going to have to be very careful on the market and investing may not be the best thing to do. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that, but that's something that we can't really decide and see and know what to do with because we don't actually have the game out in front of us right now. But the number one thing I would tell you to do is maybe use last year's prices as kind of a guide and maybe think about where you see the prices on the market to start the game off this year. If you see once again this year when the game is out that Vinny's 100K, you're like, okay, that's too cheap, right? This is going to go up. Yeah, it's going to go up. That's Vinny. Vinny got to upgrade this year too. He's going to go up, right? Or if you see Holland, like we just looked at, at like 40 or 50 or 60,000 coins, he, he's going to go up. But if this same card is like 400, 500K in the first week and it's like, wow, he's really expensive, but he's supposed to go up, right? So I should buy him? Well, probably not, right? I mean, you can't be buying a card for super crazy expensive values. Um, yes, every year the market is different, but I mean, we have to use some common sense and kind of, we can relate to last year as a good kind of basis for a lot of these cards. 
but every year is a little bit different. So that's why I wanted to kind of talk about how the market's shaping up to be maybe a little bit different this year. And we'll talk about that going forward and adjust on the fly. So make sure you're subscribed and catch on all the videos that we post during this period, because there is going to be a lot as we get onto this market and mess around, trade and see what's moving on it for the very first time. Now, we only covered number one. That's all the cards you should sell, right? The lower rated, the Adiemis, those types of players, the Van de Vens, the Dokus, stuff like that. Now, let's move on to ones that are kind of a tough decision. Renato Sanchez, I would put, even though he was in this starter team and we mentioned him here, he's in the tough decision category for me. He's in the it depends, right? There's some cards that you just don't really know. It's tough because a card like this is so meta and so popular. He might start off at 10, 15K and then go up to about 30K. He's not going to last there forever, but he might actually maintain his price and be at least 20K for another week or two. And that's where it gets a bit tough because some of these cards, like even an Angel Correa, might start at 10, 20K, might go to 30 or 40, probably won't stay there forever. But if you're somebody who's packing this Correa on like the first day of the web app, I would say hold because if he's 10K, that card's worth more than 10K. Or if you pack a Renato Sanchez and he's 15K, I would say hold. But again, it kind of depends. If Renato Sanchez is 50K, that's first or second or third day. Like, okay, we'll take the cash type of thing. So that's one of a situation where it's like, all right, this is a card that gets used the most in the earlier stages of the game. It's not going to get used for months and months on end, like an Mbappe, like a Hansen card would be this year, or maybe even like a Rafael Leao would this year. So that's a card that is a bit tough to call because it's like, hmm, do I take the coins right now while it's up? Or do I wait maybe a couple more days to see if it goes up a bit more? Because that's a card that's a little expensive. It's not 10K or 5K. It's a little bit more than that. And that's a card that a lot of people really want to get as well. So that's one of the ones that it is a, it depends for me. But as we know, a lot of those cards as well will end up dropping off in value, just like these lower rated ones did. It just won't be as drastic. So you can maybe hold on to these for a little bit longer or just hold on to them and use them in your team for a bit. But I would not hold on to them forever, as we always say with gold cards at the start of the game. Now, card, this is the best one, guys. This is the best part of the video cards that you need to keep right because let's let's face it if you're packing a card like this you're loving life this is the fun part of the video because if you're saying nate just packed mbappe do i keep or sell nate just packed Vinny, do i keep or sell or tevez or an icon that is a keep my friend you just packed an absolutely incredible pull in the early stage of the game that's a pull that so many people would wish they could afford at the beginning stage and guess what that's what they're working for you beat them to it because you were lucky and you packed it right that's the lovely thing about opening packs and um the luck that is with packs and the fun and the chase and the grind and everything, right? If you pack something like an icon or a hero or even a team of the week one card, this is a prediction for the team of the week one. If you packed a Lewandowski or the Karchawi PSG left back, if she gets in team of the week, if Alvarez gets in or if Mkhitaryan gets in, maybe even Javi Simons, those cards I would hold, man, because those are going to appreciate in value as they are more rare and less people can afford them at the beginning. But as people work and they get coins from rewards and trading and investing, people's coin totals will go up. The supplies uh, on the market for these sorts of cards, like a Tevez, an Icon, an Inform, and of course your top tier meta cards, like uh, an Mbappe, like a Holland, those are not very supplied. So there's a growing amount of demand and there's still not as much supply to grow with that demand. So the prices go up and that's just how it works every single year. Mbappe guys is gonna go up in price, right? You know, obviously Mbappe this year is gonna be really, really expensive and it's maybe not gonna be as drastic of a rise as this year, but the beginning part of the market is so much fun because if you're lucky enough to pack a massive pull, not only do you get to, you know, boast and say, man, hey, look at me, I packed Mbappe, right? Flex, but you also, get to make coins on that card because the price goes up, at least for the first week on like all of these types of cards, just because people have to acquire coins and however they're doing that to actually afford these. So cards like Holland, cards like Mbappe, cards like Neymar, the list of these players is fun to name off, right? We're talking about meta players that if you think about it are probably about 30, 40, 50,000 coins and above because those are the players that people are going to be upgrading to after they use their starter team like this they get more coins to go buy more players they're then going to be able to afford a, a player like puteas a player like kavicha but a player like messi or Vinny or jude mbappe osaman 
Leao, Bonmati, um, you know, Kolomani's kind of in that in-between category, I would say. Probably going to be about 50K. He doesn't have that amazing stats. I know in yesterday's video, I forgot to mention he's not on Frankfurt. He's on PSG, so that helps his price out probably a little bit extra. Um, but that's maybe a little bit on an in-between one, right? Musiala is definitely a meta card. Rashford, definitely a meta card. You know, Dabinia is meta. Militao is meta. There's a lot of meta cards. Griezmann I saw down there. Man, that's going to be a card that so many people are after. Definitely keep an eye on Griezmann's price. Those are the fun types of players, right, that I would keep because their prices are going to rise. They're going to appreciate like this Mbappe did. Even if you packed him on like day four or five of the game when he's 1.4, he still went up another 300,000 coins in that first month. And if you packed him at 1.4, you still got to use him for an entire month last year before he went down below that into November to be like 1.1 mil. And that's a long time for a lot of games and a lot of rewards that you could use a big exciting top tier meta card in game to obtain extra coins through rewards that you wouldn't have to sell right away anyway so that's the fun part right keeping the cards that are high value that have potential to rise because everybody else wants them and that's kind of the that's kind of how it goes guys you want to buy uh, the cards that are going to rise like that as well. And that's why we sell those cards in the beginning, like the Adiemi. We sell those cards in the beginning, like this Rosso, who might be 4 or 5K, but after the first month in the game is never going to see that price again unless specifically required for an SBC, right? Same kind of thing for Adiemi. That's why we sell those cards so that we can go get coins to invest in the players that everybody else is going to be buying to build into their teams. Now, we're going to have more trading, more investing videos going forward, but today I wanted to try to answer the question for you guys. Do you keep or do you sell? And sometimes it depends. So hopefully that answered your questions today. If you have any questions, drop them down below in the comments. Videos coming out every single day. A lot of news, a lot of updates as we start EAFC 24. So buckle in for it. If you enjoyed it, once again, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below for any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nathan Foot Accountant. See you guys later. Peace.